Hello everyone, and welcome back to Introduction to Programming Remastered. If you haven't seen the previous episode where we go over what programming actually is, I'd suggest you check it out as it helps lay the groundwork for the other topics that will be covered in this series. In this episode specifically, we will be beginning how we actually write code. In order for programs to work, they have to be written, compiled, and run. And the best way for us programmers to do all of this at once is through an Integrated Development Environment, or an IDE. An IDE provides a programmer with a graphic interface on your computer that allows a programmer to easily write, run, and debug their code without requiring any other programs. IDEs are essentially the programmer's one-stop shop for creating and testing their program. You write the code as if the IDE were any other text editor, and the IDE handles compiling and running the program whenever you need. IDEs also provide many useful tools to the programmer that make writing code more intuitive and convenient. For instance, one thing that you'll notice when programming is that the vast majority of the time you spend isn't going to be actually writing the program, but instead tracking down bugs. We will be getting more into bugs and debugging your program later in this series, but for now, you can just think of bugs as issues in your program that cause it to run improperly. This could mean syntax errors, where you misspell a function or a variable, logic errors, where your program's logic flow is flawed and doesn't produce the intended result, or runtime errors, which include things such as trying to divide by zero. The specifics of these types of errors are not important right now, but know that IDEs tend to make tracking down errors very easy. IDEs will typically provide you with the type of error that occurred and the exact line where the error occurred, which is super useful as it provides you with a pretty small search area for finding the error in question. Additionally, IDEs typically allow you to visualize your project hierarchy and work on many different files across the same project. This is something that we will be touching on later, but for now, just know that it is a very useful feature. There are many different IDEs out there that provide support for any given language that you could want to program in. Some examples include NetBeans, Visual Studio IDE, and Eclipse. Those are some popular IDEs, but there are many more to choose from, no matter what language you are looking to work with, and they all have pretty similar features. Similar to languages, it's best to find one IDE that you find comfortable and stick with it. Similar to learning a real spoken language, learning a programming language requires an understanding of its core concepts and how its building blocks work together to form logically coherent programs that work as you had planned. The rules of a language are its syntax, and each programming language has specific syntax rules that you need to follow for the computer to be able to interpret your program. Some syntax rules include proper use of white space or curly braces to block off sections of code, using a semicolon at the end of each line when appropriate, and the proper spelling of functions when calling them. If you don't follow these or other syntax rules, this tends to result in a syntax error, as mentioned previously. This is another reason why, when learning programming, choosing one language is typically best, as it can be jarring changing languages and having to learn a whole new set of syntax rules once again. As an example of using syntax rules, if we wanted to do something simple, like initializing and declaring a variable, we haven't covered variables yet, but this example should still make sense regardless. In Java, notice that I have to declare its type before I name it. So for creating an integer called age that stores the value of three, I would write int age equals three, with a semicolon at the end. That displays some very important syntax rules in Java. For instance, we have to declare the variable's type, int, give it a name, and end the line with a semicolon. Remember from the previous episode that computers are very dumb and require specific instructions, and these syntax rules are how we ensure that the computer can actually interpret the program that we give it. Programming syntax is very similar to syntax and grammar. Forgetting a comma in a sentence can change its entire meaning. For example, the sentence, let's eat, grandma, changes drastically by doing something so simple 
as forgetting a comma, becoming let's see grandma. As you can see, what seems to be a small mistake can have very large repercussions. That same goes for something like forgetting a semicolon when programming in Java, as this will certainly cause your code to be misinterpreted. While syntax errors can be pretty annoying, as said before, one of an IDE's most useful features is its ability to point out where syntax errors are so that you can fix them. Still, it's best to avoid syntax errors altogether, and so it's best to learn the syntax rules of a language before you jump into writing a complex program. While a language's many syntax rules may seem tedious while you learn them, having a strong grasp on them is absolutely necessary to properly write code. That just about covers the basics of syntax and IDEs. Next episode, we are going to be getting into our first piece of actual code in the series, when we go over the print statement and the console, staples of any programming language. Be sure to subscribe so that you get notified when that video comes out, as well as the sorting algorithms content that Steven has been working on. With that said, thanks for watching.